Dr. Acharya, so will you tell me a little bit about the research that you're doing here at Columbia? Sure, it will be a pleasure. So um, we are working on metastatic breast cancer and um, we have been looking at the immunotherapy angle. So basically what these innate immune cells do to metastasis. So this is stemming from um, our previous work when I was a postdoctoral fellow at Sloan Kettering. And what we found was that metastatic breast cancer cells um, that go to lung actually have a very specific uh, release of certain factors. And these factors bring in certain immune cells, and these are innate immune cells like neutrophils, um, that help the tumor grow. So we have been trying to basically block the factor release from the tumor cells and also this recruitment of these immune cells into the tumor. And by doing some preclinical analysis in experimental models of um, breast cancer, uh, we found that if we can prevent this, uh, we can prolong survival in the mice. Um, and we can actually even um, see that the metastasis uh, doesn't recur for, for some time. So, so we are trying to now understand how can we make this more effective, uh, what kind of preclinical drugs we can combine uh, to make this more long-lasting. And you're seeing results in mice that exactly. this is reducing uh, the metastasis load? Exactly. So we are trying different models. We are trying some genetic models of tumor, of breast cancers, and that spread to the lung. And also we are combining that with human cancer cells that we also inject in the mice. So it's a com combination of different experimental models, but I think the overall trend is the same, that if we can block this loop that's going on between cancer cells and immune cell, um, we, can, we can prolong survival. And what types of compounds are you working with to treat the mice? So um, based on our previous study, uh, we had seen that this axis that is effective uh, to be blocked in experimental models uh, can also be mimicked by using a small molecule inhibitor um, known as a CXCR2 antagonist. And this uh, small molecule inhibitor is in clinical trials, not for cancer a whole lot, but uh, mostly for rheumatoid arthritis and inflammatory diseases. So we were trying to combine that with chemotherapy that's normally used in patients like adriamycin and cyclothosamide, AC or Taxol. So if we combine that with this inhibitor, we can see um, more effectively, we can basically reduce the number of metastases and then also prolong the time uh, that they are metastasis free in the mice. Uh, so now um, there's a phase one trial uh, that's ongoing based on this work, um, it, we are trying to combine a TNF-alpha blocker with chemotherapy. That's mm -hmm. also in this same pathway uh, to target these um, in metastatic patients. So hopefully we can also do this in, in metastatic breast mm -hmm. cancer patients uh, after more trial. Tell me a little bit about how the Metaviver funding is being used to prolong your work. Yes, I think um, this is extremely critical for a lab like ours. We have just started. It's been a year and few months uh, since we joined Columbia and started our own lab. Um, and Metaviver funding this year actually is going to uh, fund a fellow who has recently joined in our lab from Spain. She has worked on brain tumors, and she was extremely interested in working uh, on metastasis, specifically in breast cancer. So this was a good team. We thought that she has interest and the funding came up, you know, for new investigators, this is very critical. So it just came on time and she came over. She just came from Spain last week. So she's all set to work on this. So we are trying to now um, look more deeply what these immune cells are doing. So one aspect is that they are helping the tumor uh, via the, this loop. But we are also trying to understand what else these immune cells are recruited there for. Are there other pathways that they're inducing? Or maybe even in a small group of cells, we are seeing that they can induce certain cytotoxicity, which would be good to kill the tumors. So now we are trying to subdivide all the immune cells that are recruited via this chemokine, CXCL, uh, and trying to see which are good, which are bad. Mm -hmm. So can we really uh, stop the bad uh, immune cells uh, by preventing pathways like the one I mentioned, or we can activate uh, the killing capacity of these immune cells. 
uh, via these factors, uh, the other ones we are studying now in the lab. And um, Christina, who joined here, uh, she is going to focus on subdividing these immune population. Mm -hmm. So, so far we hear a lot about sequencing of tumors. Now we are trying to look phenotypically into these immune population to see which ones, what their functions are basically. And a lot has been done in the area of T cells, for example, in the adaptive immune system, uh, but relatively less is known in the neutrophils. These are short-lived cells, but still they are so abundant in our body, and when there's a tumor, they are increased many fold. So uh, we think that we might be able to use these cells to also get a better response for the tumor. And our experiment early results are showing that. That's great news. So what are some of the challenges that you face in your work? I know that funding is always an issue. Um, what are, and, and we're doing our best to fund your research and the, and the important work to, uh, uh, that others are doing. What are some of the other challenges that you face and how can advocates help? Yes, I think uh, it, when we are trying to do translational research, for example, I think it's very critical to bring in the oncologists and the basic scientists together uh, in terms of moving this forward. Uh, we have been quite fortunate here at Columbia that this is happening, but I think at a more national level uh, in the conferences, for example, for metastatic breast cancer, so we need to push that forward. Um, I think it's still limited funding, obviously, but also the awareness of how important metastatic cancer research is, uh, and it kills so many patients, we need to do something about that. I think that awareness needs to go beyond just few institutions that are mm -hmm. doing it, but more at a national level. So I think that would help in general, and um, for example, in some of the meetings I've gone to, um, it's mostly we hear still majority of the talks would be on primary tumor control, but I think fewer talks on metastasis and per se looking at the mechanisms of metastasis which which can really progress survival if we, mm -hmm. if we think about it. So mm -hmm. I think that part uh, is a challenge still uh, for in terms of funding, you know, how important this area is when, when there are newer investigators like us in this area, I think to get them in and kind of creating awareness would help and mm -hmm. the advocates would be key in that. Mm -hmm. And we are also working with a team of advocates here, um, so it would be really great to bring this all together. Mm -hmm. so. Do you face any specific challenges moving um, clinical trials forward to phases two and three? Yes, I think um, sometimes uh, when it's not a targeted therapy, for example, or some, something that is not per se targeting the tumor, there is reluctance often. Uh, for example, for the immune system now with the immunotherapy trials, it's, it's very widespread and very um, well publicized, but some things like this, like the innate immune therapy, uh, for example, macrophage therapy, there are several investigators who have done a lot of good work, um, and those are coming into the clinic, clinical trials, but I would say the phase is still kind of, the pace is slow. So I think um, pushing that forward uh, would be quite mm -hmm. critical. And we have, uh, in, also in our study, um, we, we are trying to push that uh, to get into clinical trials, but there are challenges uh, for that. Mm -hmm. so, so I think streamlining that process would help. Mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes the oncologists are also on board, but just, I think, sheer bureaucracy or getting the drugs, things like that are often difficult. Um, at preclinical stage, we have more of a control, but at the clinical one, mm -hmm. I think uh, we are dependent on a team to, to get this mo moving forward. Dr. Acharya, why did you choose a career in metastasis research? So I think primarily when I became interested in cancer research, um, it was striking that majority of the deaths are still due to metastasis. And when I compared what's really known about the primary tumor and the control, the local control, relatively very little is known uh, on metastasis. And I figured that uh, if we can do anything in this area, even understanding a little bit of the resistance, for example, why these metastatic cells do not respond to therapies that normally primary tumors would respond to, I think that we can make a difference in survival. So I think that part was always uh, ingrained in me, and um, that's why I joined a lab when I was doing a postdoc that focuses on metastasis, uh, Dr. Masagi's lab at Sloan Kettering. And there I think we were all very much thinking about metastasis all the time, and um, that helped in, again, refocusing my efforts when I started my own lab to work on metastasis. And now I'm very lucky to have a group 
a great team with me uh, who are all focusing on different aspects of metastasis and uh, it's been great to work with them. Well, on behalf of the metastatic community, we thank you for your work. It's very important to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we are really grateful to Metaviber for the funding thank for you. this.